Hi everyone, welcome again. So today we'll be studying the industrial chemistry option of the year 12 syllabus. And last lesson we talked about natural resources. And so in this lesson we'll be doing case studies on various natural resources that have been replaced with synthetic materials. So the first case study we're going to do is fertilizer. So fertilizer, obviously the uses of fertilizer are simply to help grow plants for agriculture and of course to feed um, the human populace. So the natural resource that we started with was bird and bat droppings. Um, bat droppings are sometimes referred to as guano. And so in South America there were plenty of bats and birds and so they had a very rich resource of these natural fertilizers. Um, and so they were generally the people to look to for these kind of things. But we had a synthetic replacement developed, which was called the superphosphate. And the reason why it was developed was because agriculture began to intensify. So lots of people wanted to grow their own food, um, or grow food for a community, or become a farmer. So agriculture became huge, and the demand for these bird and bat droppings was far exceeded the, demand, the supply that we could get. So obviously we needed fertilizer, otherwise people couldn't eat. So we developed this superphosphate. So we originally got this natural product from Peru and Nauru. So Nauru being um, where the Liberal Party has proposed the offshore um, immigration um, center, and Peru being part of, like I said, South America. So of course the alternative was this superphosphate. And we created it by crushing phosphate rocks, so rocks that contain phosphate, with sulfuric acid. So later on in this option we'll learn how we produce sulfuric acid, but for now all we need to know is that phosphate rocks were treated with sulfuric acid to create this superphosphate um, chemical. So here is the reaction. We've got calcium phosphate, which is our phosphate rock, of course the sulfuric acid, and some water. And so we get out this um, calcium sulfate uh, with some water in it, as well as this superphosphate, which is the calcium um, hydrogen phosphate here. Okay? So this is what we're this is our fertilizer here. And so that's how we produce this superphosphate um, fertilizer. Um, one of them that I'm familiar with from my HSC study is natural rubber. So, you know, rubber as in anything, rubber seals in your car, rubber bouncy balls and things like that, um, all come from some kind of rubber substance. And we used to produce rubber from the rubber tree plant, which is shown here. That white sap coming out is essentially latex. Um, latex is obviously a type of rubber, uh, or a precursor to normal rubber. And from that, we can make all of the rubbers that we normally deal with, right? So the synthetic replacements were synthetic rubber, which is called styrene butadiene. So this one is quite an older style chemical produced in the World War II era. And isoprene, which is a slightly newer chemical. So rubber used to come from Malaysia and Southeast Asia. So um, all of those, Indonesia, that area because they had a rich supply of rubber tree plants. Now during World War II, the Japanese controlled that entire area. So that meant that for the Allies, natural rubber supply was constrained because they commanded that Southeast Asian section. So obviously they needed an alternative, otherwise they can't build their tanks or their jets or their engines and things like that. So synthetic rubber was developed simply to allow allied forces to continue building industrial machinery, right? Seals and things all need rubber. So the styrene butadiene monomer is this one. So this being the styrene element. And you've got um, one ethylene bond here, so one double bond here. And there'd be another double bond that broke to form these two electrons. So there's two double bonds in this, so that's why we get diene. And also the isoprene monomer. So you can see there's two double bonds as well. Okay. Now this was again just simply to allow 
allied forces to produce synthetic rubber um, so that they could build their machinery. So styrene, butadiene, and isoprene were the two alternatives to natural rubber. And they worked very well. Um, we still use these um, in modern days um, for rubbers in your tire and things like that. So that's um, essentially what these two, um, what natural rubber was replaced with now. So that wraps up today's lesson on the case studies for natural resources. So we'll move on now to the question segment and hopefully you'll be able to use this stuff to answer the questions. So explain why, uh, why chemists often seek synthetic replacements for some natural products. Okay? So we didn't talk about it sort of explicitly in our last lesson, or in this lesson. So we will try and, we'll still try and answer this nonetheless. So remembering that explain is just a cause, we have to talk about the cause and the effect. So supply can sometimes be constrained or not be able to meet demands. So that's one reason why we want synthetic materials. Because it allows any country to produce these materials, assuming that they have the chemicals available. Because sometimes supply can be constrained, like in the World War II incident, or we just can't meet demand, like in the fertilizer incident. So World War II is an example of constrained rubber supply, while natural fertilizer is an example of a supply unable to meet demand. Um, synthetic chemicals are often easier to control in terms of quality as well. So because we're generating these from chemicals that we can control very, very accurately um, compared to natural products which have a large variance, we often like to use synthetic chemicals simply because we can control them much better. Okay, so moving on to question seven. What is synthetic rubber and why was it created? So we just talked about this as our last case study. So in World War II, the natural rubber supply was constrained okay, by the Japanese. So styrene butadiene was developed as an alternative because it could be produced from the petrochemical industry. So remembering that many countries had access to oil, and we could produce this styrene butadiene from the petrochemical industry, so of course we would produce rubber because we have a constrained supply from the Japanese. And here is the styrene butadiene monomer. Okay, so moving on to the last question. What is the alternative to the natural nitrogen or guano resource? So it's the synthetic fertilizer or superphosphate. So we just talked about that as the first case study. Um, we replace superphosphate, we replace, sorry, natural guano for superphosphate because of the intensity at which the, um, the, the agriculture industry was increasing. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on a case studies of natural resources. So we've looked at um, fertilizer as one case study and natural rubber. So we looked at why they were constrained or not able to meet supply or demand. And we looked at what their alternatives were and why those alternatives were created. So in the next lesson, we'll be, talking, we'll be doing a review of chemical equilibrium because that's important for industrial chemistry. And so I hope to see you at our next lesson. Thank you.